Coming to you live from the basement of Legia's house, it's the upcoming crowdfunding games of this week. What do you need to know? I mean, this is sort of a lull week. I mean, last week was massive. Massive. Well, if they're your side of thing with Iridia, with Lands of Galzir, with Drunagor ending, with Divinus ongoing. It's a lot of stuff, right? Well... Maybe a little bit of a lull this week, but don't count it out because sometimes it's those small ones like Velodome that I talked about in the previous, you know, roundup from yesterday that catches your eye and you go, oh, well, that's really actually, okay, you got me. So that's why I do this video because sometimes you find gems like that and I like talking about them. So let's do this. If you missed it, Another blurbs this week in terms of uh, my little topics. That's an ongoing thing. Believe me, I have plenty more of those. If you think those are nice, if you like the engagement, the thinking side of things, just a different view on some topic in the hobby, there's going to be more. I have five right now as of the filming of this, waiting in the wings to talk to you guys about, to be able to you know stimulate more conversation. If you missed the one from two days ago, it was Board Games and Money Part 1. I'll tell you right now, spoilers, there's already a Part 2, there's already a Part 3. So if that one caught your eye, there's more to come. So, anyway, enough rambling, enough preamble, enough ranting, whatever. Let's do this. That's not why you're here. Let's look at the stuff. Hopefully you're choosing wisely. Look, we're just going to start right with probably the biggest name of the week. Now, how many of you are actually going to be able to get in on it is a different question, because this is Masters of the Universe, Fields of Eternia. This is the Archon Studios version, the version only licensed in the EU. I've already seen a couple threads pop up on the interwebs talking about people trying to get, you know, a swap. Oh, hey, you know, I'm in the EU. I'll get you this one and you get me the Zemon one and vice versa. So it'll be interesting to see what happens from that side of things. But they have a page already up on GameFound that you can check out. And as you can see, clicking for reminder, 48 hour bonus gets you this little guy, Orko. I wouldn't have remembered the name if it wouldn't be right there. I just Masters of the Universe was not one of those, like for me, that was a big childhood hit. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Exclusive previews. And the other thing, like I said, with GameFound right now, I like one of the main things that they do that is better than Kickstarter is, but just by following, you don't need to be backing to get the updates. And I love that feature. Now, I hate not being able to read the update in my email and having to go to the game page all the time, but that's splitting hairs. So there are a few more things up on this page than we last talked about. It has a stretch goal daily unlocks. See, now this is different wording. Trade show exclusive, game found exclusive. Okay, daily unlocks versus stretch goals. Um, That may be, again, splitting hairs, but I view those things as two different things. Stretch goals, meaning if we hit a certain amount of whatever, we're getting this extra unlocks meaning daily unlocks no matter what just by the fact that it's a new day you're getting something and so i'm not sure if they're using those two synonymously or if those are actually going to be both like we have seen in some campaigns now and there is a little bit more information okay adventure driven tactics strategy epic campaigns solo family friends always this very vague language one to six 90 minutes okay that player count is interesting because one to six you don't see a lot of that especially with something that looks like this on the table again though no mechanics yet so here you see some of the miniatures i mean the miniatures aren't going to be the issue here i mean i don't think people are going to argue too much on the archon side of things you can see some of the character cards right here it looks like they have an attack another attack and then some text down here. I'm assuming that's some sort of asymmetric ability. And it looks like, I mean, you're getting six heroes, six warrior villains. Okay. Vehicle cards, encounter cards, encounter cards, event cards, boss cards. Um, so boss cards, epic beast cards. So is this going to be more like The Witcher? This reminds me a little bit already, just looking at it from that side of things. Um, scenarios. How are the scenarios going to be? Is it just... Like, you do one scenario per game. Are they going to be scenarios like quests, victory cards, uh, effect cards for solo? I mean, there's a lot of stuff up here. Mission book. So, again, there's a lot of stuff 
but let's see what it actually is. Okay, build your faction. Three out of six champions. So they're going more of the super fantasy brawl-esque. And I guess the question is going to be, if you're picking three out of six every time, how would you do that with six people if you only have 12 characters? Okay, so obviously already we're going to note there's going to be either extensive stretch goals or there are going to be a couple expansions thrown in right away. Again, just so you need to know that. Play of friends, solo, there's an AI. Strategy is the key. Here you go. Um, it's area control. Trade within your heroes. Trade within your heroes. That doesn't make sense. Trade in your heroes or trade among your heroes. Visit merchants, I'm assuming forges, uh, to purchase more gear. Tactical moves, okay. Gear up your characters. Exploration, okay. So you're going to be exploring as well as area controlling. There's going to be plots, quests. Um, already right now, I'm sort of wondering, is this trying to do too much? I, because I, how is this all going to be cohesive? How is this all going to mesh? I have no idea. Epic Clashes. Draw your card, select one you'll put on a grid, assemble your deck. Um, again, more of a deck fighting issue. Okay, that's going to be interesting. Uh, victory points are victory points. Oh, here you go. Called it. And no, I did not look at this beforehand. This is all first look for me, so I'm not like, like trying to like cheat and go ahead. Okay, so Snake Men expansion. Um, what are you getting here? Traps. Invasions of the Serpents, you're getting uh, six more villains. Soldier cards as well. So again, I don't know if you're going to be able to then just select more people for that side of things. Another another expansion, I wasn't kidding. Another villain, new skills are required. Another evil horde. More stuff. There you go. Okay, no prices though. Okay. Collector's Predge gets you both expansions and then daily unlocks. I'm sure some of you are going to be able to know who these are. I don't have a clue. Another separate second He-Man there. I don't know. Um, okay, we'll see. Uh, shipping already in the March 2022. That's ambitious. And it's only a 14-day campaign. There you go. Um, we'll see. This is going to be interesting. Like I said... I'm not going to be able to get it, but I think it's going to be worth talking about. So, I mean, that's why I'm already talking about it. That's why I'm emphasizing it. That's why I'm putting it at the first in this video it is launching on the 10th. Check it out. Next up, also launching on the 10th is Flamecraft. This is a one to four player worker placement style game with dragons and dragon, not meeples, dragon miniatures. And I'm sorry, this is actually a two to five player game. This emphasizes worker placement where you are an artisan trying to recruit artisan level dragons, not for their destructive power, but for their creative power to imbue households with intricacies and delicacies uh, to amaze and to wonder. And whoever can do the best wins. You are allocating these dragons that each have one of five separate specialties to shops that are best suited for their needs. Visit the shop, gain an item, gain the favor of the dragon there in order to produce something down the line. Attract fancier dragons, get better stuff. Get better stuff, win the game. Here you can see what those little dragon miniatures look like. And I like the fact that it's a little bit more minimalistic and it just looks nice. So obviously I'm going to guess that between uh, just this picture alone, you can get a, a sense of that the Kickstarter is probably going to have a deluxe version with metal coins. Mm, metal coins. You know me and metal coins, guys. And obviously I think I would guess that the miniatures are going to be more of the deluxification as well. And you may end up with just, uh, well, these are the resources obviously, but maybe just like standees or like wooden little meeples instead. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised from that side of things. More tokens. And here you get to see a little bit of what the cards actually look like when you're playing them. Here are some of the recipes that you may need to be utilizing uh, based on the resources that you can gather and how many points you're going to get for the combinations of them. There's not a whole lot of other information on BoardGameGeek. There's one live playthrough or discussion, something along those lines from Unfiltered Gamer. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to have to wait and see when it comes out on the 10th for more information. Next up, also launching on the 10th, is Kingdoms Rise and Fall Dorian. 
this is an interesting game because they say the player count as a strategic deck builder where you are leading your army based on one of three characteristics of uh, physical, stealth, or magic plays three to six players. A very interesting count for a deck building game. You are going to be leading your army. Interaction is high with definitely head-to-head -head tactical fighting your armies against each other, as you can see here. And it appears there is going to be a map to go along with this. So this gives me feelings already more in the lines of something like Tyrants of the Underdark rather than a just head-to-head -head deck builder Star Realms-ish, if you will. So here you can get a better view of what the board actually looks like and a little bit of what the standees and the setup is going to be as well. The different asymmetrical, I'm assuming asymmetrical uh, classes, although it may not be. It's kind of hard to tell from this picture. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see if you can copy the success of something like Tyrants of the Underdark, which, to be honest, is a highly underrated game. Now, it's not for everybody by any means, um, but it is well thought of, and it definitely fills a niche that is out there that has not really been replicated too well by other games yet at this point, I would argue, especially in the fantasy theme side of things. So I can see where the appeal is. Um, it'll be interesting to see what the price point is and how this actually plays out, and just more information on it in general. There are no videos or files on BoardGameGeek, so if you want to learn more, check it out on the 10th when it launches. Next up, launching on the 10th, we have a combination of games from Nizia and Bitewing Games. The first is Soda Smugglers, and the second is Puma Fiosi. <laughs> Puma Mafioso? Anyway, so first up, we have Soda Smugglers. It reminds me, based on the description, of a different version of Sheriff of Nottingham, if you will, where you are taking turns being the border guard and the rest of the players are trying to smuggle this carbonated wondrous thing that it is past you. And after each person has been the guard a number of times, for a lower player count, I think three to four, you play it at just twice, and five to eight, you play it maybe two or three times. And once you have done that, the game ends, and the one who has been able to smuggle the most wins. The second game, Puma Fiosi, is completely different. Now this is a two to five player game, and as I mentioned, it's the Puma Mafiosi. This is a very interesting rethemed version of a game called Rooster Booster. Can't make that up. That game is a trick-taking game, and what you're doing here is a little bit of combination of trick-taking and press your luck, where each round there is a deck of 1 through 55 that has been dealt out from 2 to 5 players, and the person who plays the second highest card wins the trick. Now, they can allocate a hierarchy that is designated of the winning card on the side. The highest up in terms of the hierarchy gets you more points, so you have the ability to place it up higher if it is higher. But if you place it up higher and it gets knocked down, you get penalized. So when to place it up higher and how high to place it up becomes very important. Definitely a different twist on things. How different is it going to be than the re-implementation of the original? Do you like the theme in the first place? If so, check it out when it launches with Soda Smugglers on the 10th. Sorry, I also forgot to include Hot Lead, which is also the third in the Nizia games of the Bitewing Kickstarter that are all launching together. So if two wasn't good enough for you while well, you're in luck, here's a third. Again, this is probably the most interesting of the three personally to me. Again, it is a two to five player count where you are trying to acquire enough evidence to convict criminals in different gangs. And you're doing so by bidding different values of investigators to get different values of said criminals of various different types of organizations. And the person who bids the highest or gets the highest card out there on the investigator card that they revealed on that turn gets the one closest to the deck. Second highest gets the second one, third highest gets the third one, so on and so forth. Now, the tricky part is you need to get a certain number of points per organization to be able to capture them. In this case, it says three. Or if you can get all five different factions, you can also capture them. But if you get more than three cards, if you get that fourth card, they smell a rat. And that's not good, and you get penalized. So that is the balance in terms of how much set collecting and the bidding mechanism 
that you're going to have to be dealing with alongside of it. And that's why it's my most interesting of these three. I'm going to be checking it out when it launches, along with the other two on the 10th. Next up, we have No Escape Redemption, also launching on August 10. This is a mini expansion modules for the base game No Escape, which is a slightly different game where you are building a maze for other players to escape from and trying to do it before anyone else can. The gameplay is relatively simple and straightforward. You play an action card, you play a maze card to someone else as part of their maze, and then you roll the die to see how far you go on your section of the maze. Now, obviously not the most probably deep game, but easy setup, easy teardown, easy to play, easy travel, they say. And with this expansion, adding just a few more of a good thing to this game in the first place, maybe giving it some more legs. There is saboteur mode. There are explosions mode, more equipment mode, and being the last one off or last one standing mode. So all in all, it's an interesting twist on things. I had never heard of this game. I'm probably going to check it out just out of curiosity because I could see this being a nice uh, middleweight family game. So depending on the price point, depending on how it looks, hmm, give it a look. No Escape, Redemption. Also, I wonder if they're going to be offering the base game in sort of a bundle. We'll have to check it out when it launches on the 10th. Next up launching on the 10th is a Noble War. This is an area control game with a twist where you are a political house uh, that is on both sides of a war between two kingdoms and you are trying to manipulate, grow, gain prestige as also wealth while still winning the war. And you are going to go head to head with a player count of two to four different people. You can see here a little bit that it is going to be more miniature based. And so that's going to be very interesting to see, again, with a price point on something like this with those different factions. Now you can see that it is going to be miniature based and you can see that it looks like at least the miniatures are different colored in terms of the factions, but they are also different appearance. So how much asymmetry in these houses will there be? How much strategy will be based on that in the first place? You see a little bit more of the cards that you're going to be utilizing there. And we're just going to kind of have to see about more details because there's otherwise not a whole lot of information on BoardGameGeek. I know I've seen this one getting advertisements uh, for ads on Facebook already. So we'll see what it finally looks like when it launches on the 10th. Next up is Wicked and Wise, also launching on the 10th of August. This is a very interesting uh, themed, but also interestingly mechanically how they're going to do this uh, from a team standpoint it sounds like where one person is potentially the dragon and the other person is the mouse helping the dragon and you are going against other teams where you can or people i guess if you can do 1v1 because it says it's two to six players where you are trying to sabotage the other team's goals while achieving yours trying to get the most gold in the end and so there's not a whole lot of information on there but it'll be interesting to see just kind of how this different style of trick taking works, especially when you have a partner to begin with. And we don't see a lot of partnering nowadays, except for, you know, I mean, I'm a classic Euchre boy, you know, uh, we play Euchre where I'm from and we play a lot of it and it's the card game I grew up playing. And so I always am interested on the team side of things uh, to see how those shake out. So this looks like it could be an interesting spin on it if they can do it well. So we'll kind of see what it looks like when it launches on the 10th. Next up on the 10th is Adver City. This is a three to four player game, dice rolling resource production style of game where your town is built on this island of destruction where all of these natural disasters and events end up happening. And you are trying to mitigate that while still make the town prosperous. So what you're doing is you are rolling over a series of rounds, getting resources based on those rolls, trading, buying, selling in order to maximize your potential. If you can have the most people alive at the end, you win. Now, again, there's not much information on Board Game Geek. It's got an interesting aesthetic. Not much otherwise is known about it. So we'll kind of see, especially as a lighter weight family game, it looks like, uh, what it looks like, what the price point is on the 10th. So that's it. That's all we got right now. That is the hopefully somewhat of a low week because there was tons of stuff this past week as well. Longer video than I expected yesterday, but hey, I'm always cool with that too. Um, Yeah, 
couple more blurb videos, maybe an are you going to back or should you back in the near future. I've got a few things I've been meaning to review. Combo Clash, spoilers, great small game that I'm really impressed by as a filler. Ausonia, the interesting deck builder from Kickstarter from like a year and a half ago or so. And, um, you know, a few other things. Um, I think I played a bunch of Marvel Champions that I'm eventually going to talk about. Maybe a comparison video of Marvel Champions and Marvel Legendary. And as well as uh, Let's Make a Bus Route, the dice game. So again, I've got a lot of stuff on the radar. And of course, the Exceed stuff. I'm starting to get into that and hopefully have one of those videos out in the next couple weeks as well. Total side tangent because I did it last week in this video. We're going to do it again this video. Uh, what are you watching TV-wise as well? You guys watching any shows? You watching anything else? I have yet to binge the Disney Plus stuff, so I am behind on like Scarlet Witch and Loki and all of that side of things. Uh, but I am uh, into, again, like I mentioned last week, some of the foreign stuff. Amazon Prime has got me right now. Uh, a new series this month, The Nordic Murders. It's Nordic Noir. It's It's okay. It's okay. It's not the best. It's not the worst. But what I'm really going to be getting back into, because I need to find where I finished uh, or got broken in in terms of uh, stopping watching and I need to find my place again, is The Expanse as well. I think probably one of the best shows out there, especially space dramas, it rivals BSG. And that's, I mean, that's saying something. Uh, I just don't know where I left off like a couple years ago. So God, I hate doing that. Uh, but if you're looking for high recommendations, one of my favorite shows of all time right now is free on Amazon Prime. If you have that, it is the original The Bridge, the Nordic series, the Nordic crime drama, probably one of the best acted, best scripted, best dramas out there, period, no matter what language it's in. The first season is free on Prime. One of the highest recommendations I can give, period. Apart from that, I'm watching a little bit of the Rurouni Kenshin movie series on Netflix, which is based off of the anime slash manga, which is always a big fan. It's actually really well done for a live action anime movie, which is really cool to see. They do it justice, which I cannot say about too many games based off of comics, mangas, or animes. The other one that I'm going to be getting into finally is uh, what we do in the shadows, uh, the FX dramedy comedy, if you will. Uh, I've been meaning to binge that for a while, so I'm probably going to get into that as well. Um, you know, this weekend, maybe a little bit between gaming and hopefully uh, not working too much, but that's about all. So I uh, hope that's interesting. Let me know what you're watching. Any other recommendations out there? Let me know. I'm always up for good stuff to check out. And yeah, we'll just kind of see what else is going on. If I have time, I might do a news roundup on Monday. Not sure what it's going to look like yet. Plus or minus, there will be a video, but whether or not it'll be a blurb, a review, news, we'll see. But tune in if you're interested. Anyway, thanks for checking this out. Thanks for making it this far. Stay classy. Have a great weekend. Have some fun. See you around.